Jim, you, you got involved with American pop culture. With, I mean, 50 Cent, for instance. Do you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't see that coming. We really didn't. Yeah, that was a, a weird one. You know, it was just true. Bono knew Jimmy Iovine, who knew 50 Cent, you know. Uh, I always liked the American rap culture because uh, it's very verbal. Irish is very, and we're very verbal, you know. So that was just, if you talk about a culture clash, that was very interesting, you know. Tell me what, well, right, what happened day one? Jim Sheridan, Fiddy, I'm, I'm going to make a movie. Here's what you're going to do, Fiddy. How did that work? Pretty weird. Like, <laughs> he was like the hardest worker I ever met. Um, but he was also odd, you know, in, in certain ways. You know, he would like, um, he would go around the Bronx with a thousand dollars, you know, like one hundred dollar bills, ten tens, and nine hundred one dollar bills, and he'd throw them up in the air. And I'd be like, look, 50, I can get an audience if I do that, you know? <laughs> but he, he thought he was like Robin Hood, and he would sometimes do it on the set. And it got so dangerous, I told him to stop, and he, you know, okay, I'll stop. Then I rang the head of the studio and said, this is dangerous. Then I told his manager, and he promised to stop, and then he went up in the car and threw it again, and I lost the head, you know? At 50, if you're a gangster, shoot somebody. Don't be throwing money up in the air <laughs> for kids to get hurt, you know? So he kind of came out of the... And I, I was wise enough to, that I'd watched all the CCTV footage of the fights, so I knew the guy with the knife as opposed to the guy with the gun. So I was standing right beside the guy with the knife in case he made a move when I gave out to him. And, uh, and was 50 was amazing. He came out... And he was like, look, I'm sorry, I apologize. And I had a list like that pre-done of about nine people that he had to apologize to. And I gave it to him, and he rang every one of them. And then he said, I never had a dad. Wow. You know? So it was kind of like a culture more extreme than ours without fathers. You know, we have a very dominant father culture, you know, if you think of play by the Western world, or you think of, but that's a different culture where there's, the fathers aren't present, you know, so. And was, was the culture clash in any way softened by the fact that you're from Sheriff Street? Yeah, totally, like he gets it, you get that, that's body language, like if you look at. Because Sheriff Street's kind of like the hood here. Yeah, you know? it's kind of like South Central, you know. <laughs> But, you know, I, I'm fascinated by, you know, Fake was talking about, like, Yates, and we were the first country to give, to give a grant to start in a theatre, to any arts, because Ireland's a figment of an imagination of poets and rich people in New York in big houses. <laughs> and so there's that big Coohull inside of it, you know, and the whole, oh, we're a nation. And the other side is kind of like, Leprechauns, you know, which is peasant culture. You know, like it's kabuki or no theater, you know. And it's like peasant culture or rich culture, you know. And kind of our, the, the nation came out of a rich culture, I'd say. And we're afraid of the leprechaun. And it's there in the Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah. But we're the only nation, I think white nation, that kind of has a, pa a parade like all the South Americans. You know, you have the Puerto Rican parade and the Brazilian parade and the Mardi Gras and Patrick's Day. But you don't have an English parade in New York. You know, you don't have a Scottish one. Because they actually, that's the red states. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, we're an into, the Irish are a kind of weird, they, they mix with everybody, don't they? Yeah. 